Greetings, Burning Man full-time, part-time, and seasonal employees. Welcome to my studio apartment bug out bunker. Today, we are going to make quiche together. That's right, the Cake Marshal is going to show you how to make a quiche at home in this global pandemic. Nobody stops cake day. Uh-uh. Not on the Cake Marshal shift. So come on, join me. We're going to make quiche. Okay, folks, the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to pull out the pie crust. It needs about 15 minutes to come up to room temperature. I prefer to use these pre-made pie crusts. You can, of course, make your own pie crust at home. You've got plenty of time to do it. So let's go ahead and pull that out and set it on the counter here. Now I've also turned on the oven to 350 degrees and I'm letting that preheat. Okay, today we're going to make a broccoli and bacon quiche. I wanted to make sure I hit all the bases here. So let's go ahead and grab that broccoli out of the refrigerator here and get that ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and chop up this broccoli. I mean, obviously there's no right way or wrong way to do this. You just want to try to get as much out of this broccoli as you can. I'm going to cut off the bottom here. We're going to discard that. You never know where that's been. Let's cut this up. You know, a lot of people only use the florets, but I prefer to use the whole broccoli here. Get all these little nugs and just kind of cut them into thin slices. They're going to be just as good as the florets. So let me get this all cut up for you here. Okay, next we want to heat up a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm going to use uh, extra virgin olive oil, but again, this is really kind of up to you to use what you want. The great thing about a quiche is it's really up for interpretation. It could be anything you want, as you've seen from some of the quiches I bring in. So I'm going to add a little vegetable oil here to the pan. I've got it on high heat. I start out on high heat because I want to get a good kind of brown on the surface of these uh, and then we'll turn it down a little bit and let them simmer. Okay the oil is good and hot. I'm going to go ahead and add in this broccoli here into the pan. Oh, you can hear the sizzle going there. You can hear the sizzle. I'm going to go ahead and stir that around. Make sure you get the oil evenly on the surfaces here. Now, I like to add a little bit of a salt, pepper, garlic combo here, SPG. I'm going to shake a little of that on here. Not too much, not too little. The quiche will have lots of flavor on its own, but this is going to add a little bit just to the broccoli itself. Mm. In case any of those little jumpers jump out, just throw them right back in. They don't mind. Okay, now we got a little bit of color on these. We're going to give them a nice little stir around. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the flame down to, you know, about a good medium, good medium heat here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. And I'm going to let it kind of come up to a boil and put a lid on it. This will help steam it a bit. And the steam will also help in the cooking without uh, burning them. So we'll just give this a, a few more minutes on steam here. Okay, it doesn't take too long, just a few minutes here. We just want to basically soften them up and now we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn off the heat and set those aside for right now. I'll put them in a bowl and we will save them for uh, a later process here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. Now, as you set these aside, you wanna remember that the whole point of this was to get off the moisture. So let's make sure as we scoop these out of here that we are leaving any remaining water that was steaming in the pan there and just capture the, the broccoli itself here. Let's get them in this bowl here. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to get going is the bacon. And I've got this uh, griddle heating up here at high temperature, again on the high heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay some bacon right on there. Of course, we wanna make sure we got plenty of bacon. You never wanna short anybody on bacon. Okay, like I said, we've got this bacon cooking on high right now, but in a little bit we're going to want to turn it down, probably after the first time I flip it. And it looks like it's getting pretty close to that first flip now, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it. Now, the secret of cooking bacon is to keep flipping it. Bacon is something that you 
can't, you shouldn't really take your eyes off of it. If you want to do it right, you want to keep a close eye on that bacon. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat down a little bit. I got them all flipped, so again, I'm turning it down to about a medium heat here. Remember to keep flipping. The key to this bacon making is cooking it evenly on both sides. So every couple of minutes or so, I'm giving it a little flip. Oh man, that's coming up good. Look at that. Okay, so I prefer my bacon pretty crispy. And it's just about at the right point. I'm going to go ahead and start taking it off now. I've got a couple of paper towels folded up over here, and I'm just going to go ahead and lay them right on these paper towels to drain them out, drain any excess grease that's on there right off. Oh, man, that bacon is looking good. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and chop that bacon up into small pieces so that it can go in our quiche. Now, this is always really hard for me because this bacon is so delicious. I'm so tempted to just eat it as I go. Oh man, it was good. But try to leave some for the quiche though. Resist the urge to consume it all as we go here. And chop it up. Well, maybe three quarter inch by three quarter inch pieces here. Then we'll go ahead and set that in a bowl and we'll put it aside with our broccoli until we're ready to go ahead and fill our quiche. So we've got our bacon and we've got our broccoli we're pretty much ready to go on making the quiche and then quiche filling. So let's do that next. Put one more piece of bacon first. <laughs> Yum! Okay, we're going to get the uh, pan ready. I'm using a nine inch uh, pie pan here. We're going to go ahead and put just a little bit of olive oil on this paper towel. Just a smidge. We're going to go ahead and just kind of put a little grease layer here on the pan. This will help keep the crust from sticking as we're cooking it. Now we have had that uh, pie crust coming up to room temperature here for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it out of here. Out of the pack. And uh, you just want to kind of gently unroll it. Now the first part where you're first opening it sometimes wants to stick to itself so be careful that you don't tear the uh, pie crust here. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay it in the pan as evenly as possible. Okay, once you got it in the pan, you want to kind of shape it to the edges. You want the pie crust to come up to the edge but not go over the edge. If you get it going over the edge, it tends to break off, and especially when I'm driving them to the office with the truck, it tends to get all over the back of my Jeep Cherokee. So. I have to push the crust a little bit into the center with my thumbs to get it to come just to the edge where I also like to put a little curl on the edge there and just kind of work my way around it until I've got it all inside the pan and not too much sticky, sticking outwards. So there we go, a little bit of air in there, I'll get the air out. Okay, perfect. Now it's just waiting for the fillings. I've got that broccoli that I set over here. I'm going to go ahead and add the broccoli in there. Again, I'm kind of shaking it out of the bowl, doing kind of a last check to make sure that there's no more water because I don't want any moisture in there. Spread that around a little bit. Then I'm going to add the bacon on top of that. Yum. Spread it around evenly. And I think we're going to add a little bit of cheddar cheese to that. Let me just go to the fridge and grab that cheddar real quick. All right, I, I got a good handful of cheddar cheese here. We'll go ahead and put that all on the top here. You know what, maybe a little bit more. I'd say maybe a handful and a half of the cheddar cheese. And we're kind of getting the, the toppings so they're just a little bit over the top of the pie crust shell and evenly spread out. A few nuggets of bacon poking out, a few nuggets of the broccoli poking out just for kind of a good look as it's cooking here. I'm going to put this back in the fridge. 
Okay, this next ingredient is a big deal. A lot of chefs will neglect this ingredient for cake days at their offices and places of work, but not on our shift, my friends. We are gonna add the special ingredient here of love and respect for your coworkers. Okay, we're gonna put about a handful of nuggets in there. It's super important that we get this in there just right. And of course, these nuggets are hard to see because they're pure emotions and thought and you don't want them to spill out over the pie thing. That's just about enough there. But love and respect for your coworkers is very important to any cake day quiche, so keep that in mind. I try not to skip on this. You want to go with the name brand ones and not the generic love and respect. You could if you really were trying to save a few bucks, but that's just not how we roll. I've set the uh, pie with the fillings over to the side now. Now we're going to mix up the wet ingredients. We're going to start out and we're going to use five large eggs here. So let's go ahead and get the five large eggs in there. Okay, we've got five large eggs in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a little salt or pepper. Feel free to not use these ingredients if that's not your taste or put in whatever you feel like using, but I prefer a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Himalayan uh, pink salt here because hey, why not? You want about a quarter tape teaspoon of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some ground black pepper. I'll grind it up fresh and again, about a quarter teaspoon of here. The fresher, the better. Okay, I've got that in there. Now I want to give this portion a little bit of whisk just to break up the eggs and mix in the salt and pepper. Okay, we've got that in. Now I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of whole milk. I prefer milk, some people like it a little richer and we'll use some half and half, but we're gonna go with milk today. Got my measuring cup here. One full cup of milk. And we're gonna go ahead and whisk that again. Good, mixed in there real good. Okay, now I've got it mixed in real good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that to the uh, pre-filled pie shell that I had with all the ingredients that we had. And we want to get that right, not all the way up to the edge because it will expand as it cooks. So we want it just a little bit below the edge of the uh, pie, pie uh, crust. And you see how the ingredients are just sticking up a little bit there, just for a glam shot. It's just for the glam shot. Okay, as I said before, this is gonna expand a little bit as it cooks, and I don't want any of the drippings to get in my oven, so I'm gonna go ahead and place it in a cookie sheet here, just to kind of catch any filling that may come out as we're cooking it. The oven is preheated at 350. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in right now. Okay, here it is going right in the oven. 350. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for a half hour. After about a half hour, we're gonna rotate it once and then we'll give it about another 20 or 30 minutes and start checking on it that. So I'm setting the timer here for a half hour. Okay, it's been about a half hour. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a spin around. Uh, 360 in there just to make sure that it cooks evenly all the way around and I get no hot spots. It's looking good, looking good. Okay, we're gonna reset the timer and give it about 20 minutes just to uh, 
get a little bit firmer and I will check it again in 20 minutes with the fork to see if it's done yet. So let's give it another 20 minutes. Okay, it's been about another 20 minutes. I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna use the old fork test. We're gonna push in this fork and if the fork comes out clean, then it's done. If it comes out a little bit wet on the fork, we're gonna give it another 10 minutes. So let's take a look here. Perfect, the fork is clean. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the oven. Go ahead and bring it over to the counter. Mmm, man, it smells good. Wow, wow. Okay, that's it. That's pretty much how you make a quiche. We're gonna let that cool down. If you wanted to save it for a while, you could put it in the freezer, no problem. Uh, it's gonna to wanna to be refrigerated after it's cooled down. Don't put the hot things in, in the refrigerator, obviously. Let that cool down and it'll be ready to go. So that's how you make a cake day quiche, or at least cake marshal style. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys all on Monday at the first Monday of the month, MMM. And happy cake day, everybody.